Okay, so I'm going back for a second to Jerome. Right here. At on... It's very hard to read. At on... Day Ben. On Day Ben. Okay. Right here at the A. e That's an E-I there. On Day Ben means to speak against or resist which is really appropriate. This would be 405 when Jerome's translation was finished and he had been sending it out to people and as I had said and you can confirm this in Christopher de Hamel's book on the monastery section that the mainstream churches see you got churches and not yet but just starting now mission missionaries who were like living like hermits okay little little groups of hermits were starting to populate especially the east but also in the west and you had like individuals who were local teachers of local congregations who wouldn't necessarily be uh, um, accorded an official church recognition and a lot of them were accepting the contemporary translation that um, Jerome had made but the mainstream didn't because they liked the old Latin that the words were familiar it's kind of like the King James only movement today they don't like retranslations they try to speak against it the ante on tapen. The actual vocabulary form of the word is anti lego. Speak against, literally. Um, a lot of them were speaking against it. Alright? So you have a split that's going on here, which accounts for why you don't have a growth going on. I mean, Jerome's understanding of Bible was like terrible. But his translations were pretty good. And even though he was doing it for Pope Damasus, the local churches that were ostensibly Catholic were not accepting the new words. Okay? But some were. So you got a split going on here. Now what I think accounts for the meter doing this is that, hi, you know, there is this guy, and as crazy and goofball as he was, he did pay attention to the actual Hebrew and the actual Greek, and he tried to translate it into good, you know, in those days, modern Latin, and he wasn't accepted. So you, you don't have to be theologically mature to translate a text. It helps because you know translation errors occur because of lack of maturity but if all you are is just as it were you know scholastic and you and you're just what do you want to call it, anal about translating the text then you can come up with a good translation and you know there are certain bible verses that are just brilliantly translated that really you know surprised me because i know that the translators by and large are not only not mature but they're like spiritual children and you can tell that because the slant, for example, in English is very religious. Okay, which many times is the opposite of what the Bible verse is telling you. So, to have him get out a better translation than they had, and to have it not be accepted, accounts for a lot of why these numbers are so bad. Okay, 33 is kind of interesting because that's how old the Lord was when he died. And this is talking about death. So that by 450 A.D., you know, Jerome's translation had been out for 45 years. And this is signified as a 203, which means that if this is the teacher line, the official Christianity teacher line, it's bad. Because this 203 means temple down. That's the syllable number in Isaiah for the very time when temple goes down. The Hebrew at Isaiah 53, 203, ending at the words, Okay, so it's not good. But 
You'll notice that in this text, this verse, he's saying, I'm going to give you the mouth with the wisdom to speak, and nobody will be able to refute you or gainsay you. All right? But his translation's coming out here, and they are gainsaying him. All right? They're gainsaying his translation. All right? So that's a negative. Now, one guy who might have gotten it then, or would have gotten it over the succeeding years, because this is 450 now, okay, is a guy who's called St. Patrick, all right? And this is Patrick's wiki article. I'm not saying it's particularly accurate. In fact, when compared with some of the other stuff I've got, it's not paying attention to some of the other research. But here, the, the point is, when was Patrick alive? Okay? And this article is claiming that his own writings don't help you date it other than the fact that it was the 5th century, which means the 400s AD. Okay? And now it says, and this is really important, even though Patrick quotes in his own writings from the Acts of the Apostles, oh, I hate that as they are rendered by early 5th century Bible known as the Vulgate, this was Jerome. These quotations may have been added later to replace the other quotation from the earlier, meaning Old Latin, Bible version, and therefore cannot be used to securely fix Patrick's date. Okay. I have another book called The Atlas of Bible and Christianity, which is edited by Tim Dowley. You can get it in Amazon. And it dates Patrick's missionary period from 432 to 461 A.D. All right. 432 to 461. So this is 450. So it be right in the middle of his missionary period. Okay. This was Antipen. And the Vulgate would have come out. All right. Jerome's Vulgate would have come out. Maybe Patrick did, in fact, get a hold of it. And so maybe these quotations are not replaced. And maybe he used the old ones. We really don't have complete proof. But it's plausible that he would have had it. And he was, of course, a missionary to Ireland. And he ran around Ireland converting people. According to Tim Dowley's book, it was from 432 to 461 A.D. So that's coming right in here. But, of course, that's only Ireland. So if this is like a world timeline about mainstream Christianity's teachers, it's not good. But at the same time, it's good to benchmark it there because this text is about being delivered over, okay, and brothers against sisters, and all the rest of it. And that was actually going on in the Roman Empire. But Ireland is not part of the Roman Empire at this time. Okay? Ireland is apart from the Roman Empire. So what's happening in Ireland is kind of like maybe really instrumental. And maybe our boy Patrick is using the real Vulgate. Not that he has to. But maybe he is, and that's why it's benchmarked here. Okay, because this is the specific rulers at this time are const the the brother the sons of Constantine, and by 452, I want to say that Constans is dead. It might not have been Constans, but there were three brothers, and they all died within ten years of each other. And the last one dies like 461, and I want to say that's Constantius too. Okay. And they were in the middle of a civil war at this point. In the Roman Empire. While Patrick, if the dates in the Tim Daly book are right, Patrick was evangelizing Ireland. And the point then would be, is while the brothers, see, here's the word for brothers, the the Constantine sons, are all hating each other and fighting each other and turning each other over to death, which is exactly what was going on in the Roman Empire. Way up in Ireland, there's this guy 
who had originally supposedly been kidnapped by pirates and that's how he got to Ireland in the first place, ended up having a copy of the Antipen Vulgate or some other version and he was using it to evangelize by himself, just one guy, not part of the official church and of course in retrospect because he did such a good job the Catholic Church tries to claim him but honey had he been alive in the Roman Empire they would have called him a heretic and he would they would have killed him okay because he wasn't part of any of the entrenched groups at the time okay so whatever you want to say about or um, Jerome it wasn't just him because he had sent out copies of his translation number one and because the mainstream wasn't accepting it number two and because they were busy engaged in the civil war number three and because there were still individuals outside the Roman Emperor Empire well number four you know we're looking at Ireland but you know don't forget outside the Roman Empire also means Persia down south in Egypt, the farther south, which they call Upper Egypt. Upper is lower and lower is upper. It's really ridiculous. Um, there were individuals. Okay? So that might this might be a verdict on mainstream Christianity, but that doesn't mean that there weren't individuals out there who had good information, who were getting people interested in the Bible, getting people saved, etc. St. Patrick being potentially one of them if the Tim Daly dates are right. Here they're less sanguine about it. They say, well, you know, was sometime in the in the fifth century and probably in the last half. Okay. I'm gonna go with Daly because he's he they, they pay a lot more attention to things and this is a wiki article. Okay. And then they're trying to say, you know, the problem with the dating and here they go, the annals date Patrick's arrival to four thirty two and then they dispute that. But this date was probably artificially chosen to minimize the contribution of Palladius, who was sent to Ireland in 431 and maximize that of Patrick. So in other words, you know, 432 is what Dowley is using. Okay? And they're saying that's probably not true. All right? Then we have, well, when did he die? Well, this one's saying 457, which would shoot the Dowley dates out of, out of whack. Okay? And then there's, there's also saying 462 is maybe when he died. That also agrees with the Dowley dates. Okay. But then here's another one in 492 where they say Patrick died. Okay. So if he was 120 years old, which is kind of doubtful, was it that late? Well, Dowley's opting with the 461. Okay rather than 492. So if you want to, you know, accept the earlier date of 460 for Patrick's death, circa 460, which is kind of what Dowley's doing because he's saying 461. Um, he's saying scholars of early Irish history tend to prefer the later date of 493. Well, if that's true, I mean, he couldn't have been more than like 65 years old when he died. In those days, people didn't live that long. Okay, so I, I have trouble, you know, thinking that, that he died that late. So I'm going to go with the Dowley age, and then if you want to accept something else, you can. What is not disputable is that this guy went all over Ireland and, and evangelized it, and of course he's the patron saint of Ireland to this day, and that has a lot to do with that. I remember my pastor talking a lot about Patrick and saying that, that he really did know his doctrine and, and that he did, you know, evangelize Ireland. Now, whether my pastor later changed his mind on that, I don't know. You know, I haven't heard everything he's taught, but I don't remember him changing his mind, let's put it that way. But for the sake of argument, because if it's not Patrick, it's somebody. For the sake of argument, somebody got the Vulgate that was translated by Jerome, starting right here somebody, individuals, because I know through his letters that he wrote to Augustine, he was sending it out piecemeal, okay, and then he sent out, you know, he finally completed it in 405, which is what this is marking, okay, 
I, it's true that the mainstream objected to what he translated because they wanted the old words instead of the new words that are unfamiliar to their laity. And it's true that for the next four centuries, four centuries, while some people accepted the translation right away, a whole bunch of them didn't, and they waited until it was old enough and nobody understood it anymore before they started using it. It was about by 800 the Vulgate becomes mainstream. 800, 400 years later. So you can see why Luke would be numbering this at 203. Bad. Okay? Because the Vulgate that I've got is Jerome's. And the Latin in it is still pretty comprehensible. You know, I mean, I study Latin in high school. And it's pretty comprehensible. And the translation is generally okay. There are some places where it goes bonkers. Like in the book of Hebrews, it translates, it uses the word worlds instead of time for Ionos in Hebrews 1, 2, or 3. I forget which of the two verses it is. But the Greek word there is Ionos, and it means time. The world, the time was designed around Christ. But they translate it secularum, which means the world. Okay, well, no, not. Okay, not. So, sometimes Jerome screwed up, or maybe that's an old Latin translation, because the old Latin kept creeping back into Jerome's work also. But the point is, is that you got at least one guy here represented by Patrick, who by 450 was evangelizing possibly and plausibly with Jerome's translation, and he's making gains. Okay, but the gains he's making are only in individuals, because we got no seven in groups here. Maybe it was just him. Okay, but there are no group sevens here. But the, the time is benchmarked, and I think that's significant. And the next time it's benchmarked is 469, which is basically saying it's time for church to start rebuilding now. It's had its 49 years in diaspora. Okay. And then, as I had finished last increment, we come down to, five, to 616, because that's the next time we have a growth. And the question is, who is this person, if it's anybody? Okay. Especially under this kind of text, because it's talking about, you know, horrible things happening amongst the people. Lots of anger all over the world. Okay. 616 is 646 at the end of the period. 21 years, it means it's beginning, you know, this is 595. 595 and 30 would be 625. So from 625 to 646, we have growth. Okay. The other thing that we have going on here, though, is the kind of growth that it is, is of monasteries. Because that started with St. Benedict, who was a real jerk, okay? He himself personally was a jerk. Um, but it started around 4, 529. But see, once you start, you can be a jerk. Of course, we all are jerks when we start the Christian life. But once you start learning Bible, and if you have monasteries that are copying Bibles, aren't they learning the Bible while they copy it? I mean, why else would you want to be a monk except to be near Scripture, Okay? So there is some growth going on, because, but it's not good on the mainstream, because this is a 126, which is like Temple Down again. But at the same time, somewhere between 625 A.D. and 646, we got a group, we got a group growing. My question is, I don't know what group that is, and so I'm going to have to try to find out, which I will hopefully by the next increment.